Welcome to the Art of Precision on Gillette World Sport 2018. In our very first show of the year, we get Fight Fit with Vasil Lomachenko. Prepare for the Winter X Games with freestyle skier Oystein Broughton. And break down the role of a football forward. You have to look for goals, look for assists, and that's the most important part. First up on Gillette World Sport this year, we get set for the Winter X Games with two-time gold medalist Oystein Broughton. The annual Winter X Games competition features some of the greatest extreme winter sport athletes from around the world. Since the inaugural edition in 1997, it's evolved into the premier action sports competition, showcasing the talents of over 200 athletes in ski, snowboard, snowmobile, and snow bike disciplines. The likes of Sean White, Mark McMorris, Tanner Hall, and Tucker Hibbert top the most decorated Winter X athletes of all time. Now, a new generation are following in their footsteps, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in action sports. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My name is Oystein Bratten. I come from a little place called Torpo, Norway. I'm uh, 22 years old. And uh, yeah, I'm a skier. I got into skiing when I was probably six or seven years old. Just regular alpine skis that I tried to do tricks on and looked up to the older guys at the hill and wanted to be like them. Just the freedom to go on the mountain and have fun with your friends. It's a pretty cliche answer, but that's what it was for me, just go out and, and have fun. Slope style, that's uh, when you ride rails and uh, big jumps, and you try and do your best tricks and make it look as good as possible. The things that are most important is to have good ski control, and then also good air awareness, and then also good balance on the rails, and I think it just comes down to skiing a lot and learning all these maneuvers. You can have one run in your head that you have been working on and you want to do and then you show up to the contest or on the final day and it's totally changed. Wind blowing and snowing and bad speed so that's happened a lot of times when you have a plan you want to do and then you have to have a plan B in the back of your head. How I come up with new tricks is I get inspired by other riders. Then you just start thinking about it and you try similar tricks and tricks that leads up to that one move you want to do. I think that mental game plays a big role and you gotta try and just not think too much about it and just keep trying and if you don't land it first try, don't let it let you down. In the air, um, sometimes you see a lot, like you can see the landing after your first rotation and other times I don't see anything and you just rely on your air awareness, I think. Yeah, I get scared a lot of times, for sure, but um, instead of taking super big risks and trying stuff that I think I maybe could land, I would just ski more and just take smaller steps all the time in order to not injure myself, as I've been lucky not to do so far. That's like every skier's goal, I think, to be able to just ride all the time. I've always liked doing rails and, and doing tricks there, almost more than on jumps. Just like a trick on a, on a small rail can be something that's never been done and, and something cool to watch. That is a very technical rail run, deceivingly hard. What's cool with, with skiing is that people are progressing it in all kinds of ways, which never gets boring. The X Games was the first contest that I started watching and I remember it was so cool to see all of those guys that were riding the X Games and that was like my biggest goal to one day become a participant in the next games. When I got the invite, I think it was in 2015, 
15. I remember I ca called my mother and she, she started crying because she knew how stoked I was to one day go there. And before I went, my brother went for some years and, and it was cool to kind of watch him and, and go the same way, even though he was a snowboarder. In 2016, I got my uh, first medal, which was third place. It was just a super crazy feeling and I couldn't believe it. I was always dreaming about it, but I didn't know if it was going to happen. So it's cool to see that if you just keep on working and it can happen. Winning X Games in Athens was just a big dream come true and my biggest accomplishment so far. I was already pre-qualified because I got third the year before and I went to do my first run. Felt really good, had landed my runs a lot of the times in practice and then I messed up on the second rail. So then it came down to my last run and I was just like, okay, this is my chance, just it's all or nothing. We're into the top three from 2016, kicking things off with Oystein Broughton. This is already an amazing run compared to his first. Oh. Big tail grab oh. and laying it out. Into the final jump, what has he got? Triple cork, 1440, he gets it, perfect. Made it so much cooler that it was in Norway, the, the second one, and all my friends were there and my family, and I skied at that mountain so many times before. And when I grew up and started skiing, I could never dream about having X Games in Norway. And then to have X Games in Norway and then to do well was, was super cool. I was uh, super happy. Still am. What a performance for the Norwegian Oystein Brock in front of this home country crowd. I have my medals on the wall at home. Made a little wall with, with my podium finishes and like my trophies. So it's definitely cool to look at that wall and, and get inspired to do it again sometime. I just want to get better at skiing for everyday riding. It's that's like the best feeling when you feel like you you get better and you learn new stuff and you progress and try and achieve new things. That's kind of my goal. And if I'm riding well enough to get more podiums in the future, that's that'd be really cool. Time now for a look at how other athletes have been preparing for the 2018 Winter X Games over the last year. Big Air champ James Woods synced up with a fellow skier. Snowboarder Staley Sandbeck also showed coordination with friends during this routine. And Rick Arlo got into shape for Aspen, competing 2,000 consecutive skipping rope jumps. 23-time X Games medalist Sean White will be looking to top the podium for the first time since 2013. The action sports legend cooled off during the summer with this leap. Meanwhile, one of the newer stars of snowboarding, Mons Roisland, made a superhero's exit from a lake in his native Norway. Swedish sensation Jasper Chotter had to stay small to squeeze between two trees. Seven-time gold medal winner Levi Lavalle gave a ride in his snowmobile to former World Cup downhill skier Darren Rolfs. Andre Regetli went viral in September with this video showing his unusual parkour training routine. Sebastian Tuton got into the festive spirit as he wished his followers a Merry Christmas in December. <laughs> and finally, reigning snowmobile best trick champion Daniel Bodine jumped in the co-driver's seat with WRC runner-up Thierry Neuville. Up next, we look at the role of the forward on the football pitch with two of the world's most highly rated players. Thomas Müller of Bayern Munich in Germany and Antoine Griezmann of Atletico Madrid in France are two of Europe's leading footballers. Both play in forward positions and are key to their team's attack. They each took time out of training to explain exactly what's required from their role on the pitch. You have to look for goals. Uh, you have to look for assists or to create some chances for your team. You have to combine uh, the movements in between each other, and that's the most important part. As a forward, I'd say my role is to spearhead the team's attacking play, to make things happen, and to try and score and set up goals. Muller specifically is known for his interpretation of space, finding specific areas where he can dominate the opposition. 
It's very important to have quick reactions, not only with your body, uh, more important in your brain. When you are quicker than your opponent, uh, it's easier to, to score, it's easier uh, to do good actions on the pitch. My success on the pitch relies on my pace and precision with the ball at my feet. Those are the things that really cause the opposition players trouble. So I do everything I can to make sure I work on those aspects in training. Both have been praised as versatile team players with each attributing his success to both mental and physical strengths. Thinking about uh, in which space or in which position you can hurt the other teams and the defenders. So you have to try, you have to do a lot of runnings between the lines, in the gaps, and maybe one out of ten the runnings is that you receive the pass and, or the ball. So it's, it's not like magician. It's a little bit feeling, but in the end it's looking to your teammates, which spaces are blocked and which spaces are free. Still to come, we're in the ring with Vasyl Lomachenko and hitting the slopes with Mark McMorris. Welcome back to Gillette World Sport. Coming up, a unique look at 2017 for Canada's Mark McMorris and exclusive access to the toughest stage to date on the Volvo Ocean Race. Now we find out what it takes to be the best of the best in the world of boxing. Vasyl Lomachenko is a double Olympic gold medalist and current super featherweight world champion. His amateur record of 396 wins and only one loss stands as one of the greatest of all time and was followed by him becoming the fastest ever two-weight category world champion in only seven professional fights. After his most recent victory in December, the Ukrainian has reaffirmed claims that he is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Right now, I fight in the best weight class, which is 130 pounds. The competition is fierce in this class, with lots of interesting boxers. That's why I think it's the most interesting weight class for me, as it might well be for you. My training is varied and includes swimming, running, general physical training, tennis and basketball. So I develop as an athlete in many ways. And of course, I make sure I do mental training, which is a very special kind of training that stimulates my intellect, a boxer's intellect, and helps me make fast decisions during the fight. Lomachenko owes his impeccable footwork to his father, who is also his coach, as he was made to take ballet classes as a youngster before ever being allowed to set foot in the ring. He has an unconventional boxing style as a southpaw who is also right-handed and therefore leads with his stronger arm for jabs. This allows him to be more powerful and precise with the shot he throws more of during a fight. When I was six years old, I asked my father, who is also my coach, which is the best title to win? Which is cooler, the World Championship or the Olympics? He said, well, of course, the Olympics. I asked him why, and he explained it to me, and I told him that I would become Olympic champion. So from the age of 6 to 20, for 14 years, I lived with the goal and the idea that I must win the Olympic Games. Well, I have done it, and when I did, I felt satisfied, and I had a feeling that I had done my duty, that I had done what I'd always set out to do. I had done what I'd been working up to all my life. I think anyone who works for an Olympic medal all his life, or at least half of it, and then wins it, would feel the same. Anyone who has been working up to an Olympic medal and deserved it by training hard would understand me and know what feelings I'm talking about. But there are also cases when an Olympic medal is won somewhat unfairly, then such a winner would not understand what I mean. I expected that when I turned to professional boxing, it would be the same as in amateur boxing. 
Once you've conquered the top, you are fighting to stay there. I thought that in professional boxing, it would be exactly the same. You reach the top, you become the world champion, and then you defend your title, fighting against the best fighters among the strongest in your weight class. I was a bit disappointed about this, because here it seems more like boxers earn their money by just banging their fists. I mean, champions are hitting punch bags more than competing with each other to determine who really is the best of the best. Lomachenko has won his last nine consecutive professional fights, displaying incredible precision, speed, and technique. This proved too much for his most recent four opponents, who all retired in their corner, including double Olympic gold medalist and previously undefeated Guillermo Rigondeau, leading Lomachenko to coin the nickname Nomaschenko, meaning no more. Anyone, and in particular any boxer, can develop his physical characteristics, which sometimes might be equal. Take two boxers who are to fight in the ring in two months. Say, one of them runs 100 meters in 12 seconds, and the other also runs in 12 seconds. One does 40 pull-ups, and the other does 40 pull-ups. One, let's say, lifts a barbell 10 times, and the second does exactly the same. They are physically equal, but the winner will be whoever is more emotionally secure, whoever makes faster decisions in the ring and is simply more intelligent and smarter. When physical characteristics are equal, the higher intellect always wins the day. Finally, I would like to add that an athlete is always the center of attention and the cameras are always focused on the athlete. But behind him and behind all his results, there is a big team that is preparing him, which in my case has been all my life. It is rarely mentioned when an athlete reaches the top and when an athlete wins the championship. He is the one in focus. So, I just want to remind you that a big team makes a sportsman, even though they stay in the background. Next, we take a look back at the highs and lows of the past year for one of the X Games' most successful athletes, Canadian snowboarder Mark McMorris. After suffering a broken leg in February the previous year, Mark McMorris began 2017 still working his way back to top form. He added two bronze medals at the X Games in Aspen before setting his sights on topping the podium once again at X Games Norway. I've been dealing with some pretty heavy jet lag, but other than that, it's been nice to be here. We landed on Sunday, and to put Oslo into words in this X Games, it's been really fun so far. Um, we've had a lot of good weather, and it keeps getting warmer, and the atmosphere is really good, and the fans really appreciate snowboarding and skiing here. It all comes down to this, with a gold medal on the line. Landing his final run. And it oh, oh, my God. God. Howard oh. McMorris. Going into last drop, I just had nothing to lose. Just needed. I could have the W if I just not put my hands down. So I don't know. I'm just super, super pleased with everything. Following his success in Norway, McMorris returned to his native Canada where on the 25th of March, he sustained numerous serious injuries after a hard fall. Just 14 days after winning his seventh X Games gold, the 24-year-old was left unsure if he'd ever ride again and facing another lengthy rehabilitation process. As his body healed throughout the summer, the 2014 Olympic bronze medalist had to settle for riding a board of a different kind, until in August. We're out here. Rehab complete, McMorris returned to competitive action by winning at the FIS Snowboard World Cup event in Beijing. 
He followed that up with victory at the Banana Open in December, putting the snowboarding world on notice that one of its biggest stars is back to his best. Now preparing for his 10th X Games, the Canadian will be looking to add to his incredible record, which has seen him take home 14 medals from just 16 starts. I'd say the X Games is sort of like the Olympics of action sports. It's something that everybody knows about, you know, and I've had an unbelievable track record at that event. To be able to have consistency at the biggest event in action sports every year has made my life a lot better, I think, and I'm really thankful for that. Finally, we're on deck as the Volvo Ocean Race teams hoist their sails on leg three of 11 as they race to circumnavigate the world. Leg three of the Volvo Ocean Race started in Cape Town, South Africa on the 10th of December. Now we sail just over 7,000 miles from Cape Town, South Africa to Melbourne, Australia. A long leg in terms of distance, but a short leg in terms of time because it took us to the southern ocean and the strong wind. Really testing conditions on the boat and on the team, avoiding icebergs and in freezing cold water and plenty of wind and a couple of different storms. Two weeks of full-on sailing in some pretty epic conditions. A very tough leg, and I hope the toughest one of the race. <laughs> Physically and mentally, sailing in the Southern Ocean is one of the most challenging things I think you could ever do. You know, it's just a personal mental journey that you go through, and there's moments where you absolutely love it, and you look around, and you're dropping in on some of the biggest waves you can imagine, and it's some beautiful sailing. And then there's other times where you just absolutely hate it, and you're just miserable and cold, and it's wet, and it's wet inside the boat and on deck, and you're just getting constantly hit with water. Mentally, that's really hard to prepare for. There's, there's nothing that you can really simulate to, uh, to prepare for it. Until you're down there, you don't know what it's going to be like. You don't know how challenging it can be. And obviously, I knew I was going to get into situations, into an environment that I'd never been into before, which was exciting. And so far, it's not more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but it's definitely everything I thought it would be. It's challenging, it's relentless, it's very rewarding. They say it's the hardest team sport in existence, and I believe that. You know, It's a mental and physical grind. We've just completed the third leg. We still have a lot more miles to sail and a, you know, another half of the planet to cover, so there's still a long way to go. You've got to keep that in mind, too.